World War II, a German scientist discovers that fusion is possible when uranium atoms are put next to radio radioactive material, it blows up. And when that got found out and all the scientists heard about it, well, many, many people died and a lot of people knows what happens next. Hello, the Bookwesters! It is I, Aaron the Bookwester, and today I have this great book, B-O-M-B Bomb! The Race to Build and Steal the World's Most Dangerous Weapon by Steve Shinkin himself, and well, let's get right on to it. It's World War II, and we just found out that radioactive material plus uranium atoms equals boom. And and we find about find out about that and a group of scientists go and visit Einstein. And I they they show Einstein the science and Einstein immediately realizes that this could be a true danger to the United States and one bomb would literally blow up everything. Blow up cities and if Hitler had access to a bomb using uranium atoms and radioactive material, aka a nuclear bomb, well, the world war would be over and Hitler would be unstoppable. In other words, they needed to build one fast. So Einstein sends a letter to President Roosevelt, and Roosevelt, getting the letter, says, this requires action. And so the Manhattan Project begins. They put together a group of scientists and military leaders, called the Uranium Committee. And the Uranium Committee is considered, consisted of the greatest and brightest scientists of that age. And who leads that project? The director is Pro Professor Oppenheimer, an epic, epic, cool scientist, almost as enigmatic and smart as Einstein. He is one of the greatest minds of the century, and he leads a team of the best scientists in the world to create the nuclear bomb. Now first, they use the, a method called a gun method, I'm pretty sure. So basically, two uranium atoms are in a bomb, and when triggered, uh, the two, uh, the two uh, atoms are shot to each other, and then it blows up. Boom. And then it hits each other, and then it blows up. Now, but... They only have enough uranium to create one sort of bomb like that. And they use this different kind of method. They have to use a different kind of method if they want to use. Uh, they want to build more bombs with less resources. So they have to complete the implosion method. Which is um, blowing it up in perfect shape inside the missile. So that when it blows up, it connects and the atoms mobilize or whatever, and boom. And basically, yeah, that's pretty much the science of it. And it's very, very hard to get this all right. And Oppenheimer, Alaz Oppenheimer, has the best scientists on his team. Meanwhile, the Soviets knows that if America is the only team with nuclear weapons, well, they could easily take over the world, which the Soviets could not allow. So they got a bunch of spies in there, and one of the main spies are Harry Gold. And Harry and there they have contacts within the Manhattan Project, namely Ted Hall, 18 year old, 18 years old, genius but shy, who wasn't at all suspected he was a spy. And another another scientist named Fuss. I, I'm pretty sure she was like a French scientist or something. He was also a scientist who, who gave information over to the Russians. All in all, it is a pretty goddamn epic, epic plot. And it's basically about Harry Gold and the rest of the Soviet spies desperately trying to get enough information for the Soviets to make an, all their own nuclear bomb. And meanwhile, Oppenheimer is desperately working on the calculations, the math, and the science in order to create the next, the first nuclear bomb. And, and finally, after months of months of working, they managed to complete the nuclear bomb. And they bombed Japan, namely Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and 
And finally, the war is over, and the scientists want to finally dust their fingers and go home. But the government doesn't want them to do that. They want them to create more powerful bombs, more of them, an entire nuclear arsenal. But alas, the Soviets are also making making bombs, and and to a very recent day, America and the Soviets, the Cold War, they each made missiles and etc. And I feel like it's just like it's a nonfiction book, obviously, and usually nonfiction books are pretty boring. But Steve Shinkin, he used like every word in this book is the word that that person that day said. It's from unclassified FBI reports, um, a hearing in like a court or something, and etc. And the information is incredibly accurate, and it has it's the situations are so it's better as any Mission Impossible missile Mission Impossible movie. And and Oppenheimer actually we find out told President Truman, the president of that time when Roosevelt died. He told President Truman that they had to get rid of all nuclear weapons and the nuclear arsenal, and they needed to somehow convince the Soviets not to make nuclear weapons as well. And Truman was disgusted. Oppenheimer said that I have I feel blood in my hands. And Truman says, "Well, you you wipe your blood off in in the water, and it'll wash off." And he really doesn't care, and he makes he makes more scientists make more powerful bombs, nuclear bombs, and later on the hydrogen bomb is also made, and so on, so on. There continues the war for the Soviets and the U.S. to make better weapons, and even to this day, nuclear fusion and nuclear weapons are a big problem. For example, North Korea threatening the U.S. and the U.S. threatening to blow North Korea up, and etc. All in all, it was an impressively good book for a nonfiction book, and it was as good as any other fantasy or spy book that I have ever read to this date. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester, it is such a great book. It has science in it. It has the science of how nuclear bombs actually work. It has the people in it, and it has so many different. Storylines and of so many different people's perspectives, of spies, of scientists, of the greatest minds of that time, and it is an epic book that we all should read. So most of this book is in the point of view of the American side of the war, although it does have a tiny, tiny bit of the Japanese side of the war. It's just like to go into a little more detail. I have lived in Japan for a couple of years. And it, a, a little bit more recent than the literal World War Two, and there there was a big accident at Fukushima where the the nuclear generator blew up because of natural disasters, and basically it blew up and it incinerated the entire place. And even to this day, people are sometimes afraid to buy stuff from. Of Fukushima because it still has that nuclear poisoning within the plants and animals and sea life that is near Fukushima, and even when I was younger, when I was actually in Japan for like an year or so, when I was like six years old, old or something, we couldn't even wa- like brush our teeth and wash our hands with uh, water with tap water because we were afraid that it would. Come, it would have come from Fukushima, so we had to use drinking water pet, from pot, pet bottles from Korea, imported from Korea, to wash our hands and brush our teeth and etc. And all in all, it's such a big dilemma: the nuclear war dilemma and using nuclear fission in any kind of way is a big dilemma. Some people might say that because of because they dropped the bomb, it actually solved the war and. The war ended more quicker, saving more lives. Some people might say that morally, it is a wrong thing to do to kill a hundred thousand, thousands and thousands of people with a simple drop of one bomb to wipe out an entire city. That some people might say that's just not right. I honestly don't really know. I feel like the bomb was necessary, but maybe, maybe back then they could have dropped the bomb in a little bit less populated area, not like a area with. Packed area like a 
population with a high population area like Nagasaki and Hiroshima as like kind of a warning to see this is what we can do and we can do this one of your populated cities you should surrender now that honestly could have been a solution but maybe maybe that impact of thousands of people dying was needed to end the war that is a debate that shall be finished and sh maybe shall never be finished and it is just very very interesting in general it is a great book, as I've said so many times, it is more exciting than many, many spy ki spy books and etc. It is a great book. And like always, your book quester, Erin the Book Quester, so many historical details, the lives of spies, of geniuses, of scientists, the brightest mind of the time. The story of the stealing and the mo stealing and making of the most powerful weapon in history. And the story that it makes us think, was this really necessary, or was it not? Have a great day.